MacArthur's career is full of triumph and controversy. On April 11, 1951, he was relieved of his commands by President Harry S. Truman. We get a lot of questions about MacArthur's firing. Why was he fired? How did he find out about his relief? And did he want to use nuclear weapons in the Korean War? Well, a lot of people ask us questions uh, about MacArthur's being fired in April of 1951, and we're right on the anniversary of that. Uh, so we brought all this out to maybe try and look at it and help people understand it. Uh, a lot of questions from kids about uh, certain aspects, you know, did this influence that? But what it really comes down to is the major disagreement between MacArthur and President Truman. Uh, these two didn't really know each other. Um, they only met once, that was on Wake Island in October of 1950. Uh, but at the end of World War II, Truman did pick MacArthur to be Supreme Commander of the Allied Powers. So he had this respect for him and knew his record and thought he would be good for that. As soon as he picked him, MacArthur goes into Japan and Truman sends him a message that says, why don't you come home and we'll give you a big parade and make a speech to Congress. And MacArthur pretty much said, I'm too busy. And Truman didn't order him home and MacArthur kind of took his measure of him from that. And then almost right after that, uh, Truman was really worried about bringing down troop levels right after the war too fast. And he wanted to say that all these troops were needed in Japan and Germany for the occupations. And MacArthur came out early and said, I only need 200,000 troops here. So this really urged Truman as well. So throughout the occupation of Japan, a uh, very limited exchange of ideas between the two. Uh, there's very limited uh, correspondence between the two. They don't ever meet each other. And then in 1950, the Korean War opens up and these two have to work pretty closely. And they have this communication problem. Pretty much everybody around Truman is MacArthur doesn't know what he's doing, and everybody around MacArthur is saying, Truman doesn't know what he's doing. So you have these two sides that really are not equating. And shortly after the war starts in Korea, uh, the big thing was that Truman was trying to keep, or hoping to keep, Red China out of this war, because China had gone communist in 1949, and they was trying to keep him out of the war in Korea. And in July, uh, MacArthur goes down to Formosa, Taiwan, and that's where Chiang Kai-shek is, and he had been kicked off of mainland China. And it's a big bone of contention still to this day between Taiwan and China. MacArthur goes down there. Um, he had been allowed to go down there, but after he comes back, uh, Truman's really worried about this. Doesn't want him making any statements about China. Sends April Harriman out there to talk to MacArthur. And MacArthur says, okay, don't worry, I'm not going to say anything. But then MacArthur releases this letter to the VFW. Um, the Veterans of Foreign Wars asked MacArthur to address their convention in 50, and in August, MacArthur sends his letter, says, you can never let Formosa go. It's an unsinkable aircraft carrier, totally violating policy that Truman doesn't want anybody speaking about Red China Formosa during this Korean conflict. But nobody does anything, because Incheon is right on the way. And this is MacArthur's bold plan to loop around uh, the North Korean forces and invade right at Incheon, the port of Seoul. And when that happens, everything's forgiven because now the North Koreans are totally f fleeing into North Korea and you were looking at a Dunkirk and almost overnight MacArthur's totally changed the fortunes of the war and now everybody's for pushing into North Korea. Now that's when Wake Island happens and this is the only time that Truman and MacArthur will actually meet is when they go to Wake Island October of 1950. Now they come there, they go there to discuss the Korean War, but they're actually discussing so many different factors and it's a, a meeting that only takes place in a couple of hours and they hold on to this statement because when they ask MacArthur about the intentions of the Chinese or the Soviets coming into the war in Korea, MacArthur said, my air power will slaughter them, they'll never get across the border and that was what was really held. Of course, no one said to MacArthur, you're not going to be able to bomb those bridges on the Yalu River, and you're not going to be able to bomb up here, and it just kind of moved on from there. Now, this is a very famous transcript, and this was kept by MacArthur's uh, secretary, who kept shorthand notes during that uh, whole meeting there at Wake Island. It wasn't supposed to be recorded, but uh, Truman's people had a young lady in an ante room, and she took notes as well, so there are two different versions of that. Anyway, Wake Island is really... Uh, 
meeting that doesn't uh, have any kind of uh, bad effects. Everybody thinks everything's going well, they're going to move through Korea, and they're going to get this thing over with. But then as they move into North Korea, uh, Mao Zedong and the Chinese uh, communists come into the war, about uh, you know, 400,000 of them. And then MacArthur is the scapegoat. Uh, getting blamed for this, and he did. He went uh, north and ignored the fact that uh, people were saying the Chinese are there, and then they got caught, and they pulled out. Thing is, back home, all the newspapers are really blasting MacArthur, and almost in the sense of he had gone north into Korea without any authorization by anybody else. And then MacArthur starts going to the press himself, something he didn't do in World War II. And then Truman puts this gag word and that's saying, you can't say anything unless you say it through to me first. And so then, as December moves into January and into February, March of 1951, as uh, General Ridgway comes in and starts moving the troops back up to Seoul, the 38th parallel, MacArthur is still releasing statements. Uh, I'm in a die for tie war. Uh, you're not giving me what I need to fight this war to victory. And as well, Truman is trying to get out of this thing. And then he tells MacArthur, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to try and get the Chinese to the table uh, and, and end this thing, status quo, antebellum. And that's when MacArthur comes out with his press release that basically tells all the Chinese generals to surrender in the field because he destroyed them. There goes Truman's peace feeler. And then Truman's trying to figure out, well, what do I do with him? Do I keep him in Japan, running the occupation, and let Ridgeway handle Korea? Do I bring him home? And then that's when this letter gets read on the House floor. And this is a letter MacArthur wrote to Republican Joe Martin. It was just like today, Republicans and Democrats at each other's throat. Joe Martin's the most rabid anti-Truman Republican there is. And he reads this letter where MacArthur says, uh, while my boys are dying over here, you're just fighting the war with words over there. And it basically MacArthur getting into policy. That's when Truman knows he has to fire him. And so on April 11th, is fired by Truman. Now, they were supposed to have Under Secretary of the Army Frank Pace come tell MacArthur that he was going to be relieved of command for not following policy. But the White House knew that the Chicago Tribune had the story and they were going to break it um, very early. And so almost after midnight, uh, they break the story that MacArthur has been fired and it's announced over the radio. MacArthur is in Tokyo at the time, it's lunchtime, he's there eating lunch with his wife and a gathering of other people, and over the radio, the staff hears MacArthur's been fired. Uh, Gene, his wife, goes up to him, tells him at the table that he's been relieved of commands. They go to the uh, teletype center, and that's where the famous messages are already waiting that MacArthur's been relieved of his command. Now, we have a lot of questions that come in. Uh, was MacArthur relieved because he wanted to use nuclear weapons. Now, up to now, nobody has ever found any kind of message that MacArthur asked, I want to use nuclear weapons in Korea. Uh, in December of 1950, uh, General Bolt, who was with the NSA, uh, got a hold of MacArthur and said, if this thing goes into war with the Soviets, what would be targets for nuclear weapons? And MacArthur lists, lists all these different uh, sites at that time. But they were the same sites that were from the old plans from the 1940s. And so people have always said that MacArthur was asking to use weapons, but they don't ever see the first part where Bolt's asking him for those, uh, that information about what cities would be used. Now, the thing is, they just did a big declassification of a lot of documents, and the Air Force thought that the Soviet Union had moved a bunch of air divisions on the border of Korea right in March of 1951. And so they're really getting worried, and they start getting the nuclear pits ready on a lot of these islands out in the Pacific, Okinawa, Iwo Jima, Guam, all these other places. And even MacArthur on March 5th of 51 says, if this thing goes nuclear, I have to have the capability to act and ask for D-Day capability. So there is that type of you know, talk going on, but MacArthur never says, you know, I want to nuke this place now. He wanted to blockade the coast of China. He wanted to use Chiang Kai-shek's forces off Formosa in Korea. He wanted to bomb Manchurian bases uh, with conventional weapons, but never asked for it. Now, after the war, 1950 war, he gave 54, he gave two uh, interviews to John Jim Lucas and to 
Bob Considine. And to both of them, he said, I could have easily won the Korean War. All I had to do was drop 30 to 50 atomic bombs in the cover of night on all their air bases, and we could have easily uh, won this thing. And so after the war, he says that, but he also says we didn't need the atomic bomb any more in Korea than we did in Japan. So he says different things to different people. But it basically comes down to, Truman said he wasn't following policy. Truman wanted to get out of the war. 